So that's the front and that's the axle. We talked about the drive shaft. The drive yep. shaft is gonna get into the what now? Uh, transfer case? Yep, so the transfer case, we're using a factory Ford transfer case. Um, it would be the transfer case that like came behind a, uh, uh, a fairly modern gasoline powered um, like F-350. So this vehicle has the new, Ford calls it the 7.3 Godzilla motor. So it's just the biggest, baddest gasoline motor that Ford sells right now as a replacement for the V10. Um, and then behind that is a 6R140 transmission. So it's a six speed transmission and that came behind um, that 7.3 in like a four wheel drive F-350. So we just take that same manual shift transfer case from behind that transmission and it bolts right up to the back of your transmission. And then we have our own um, kind of like proprietary shifters and everything that you can see here that we manufacture in North Carolina. This just bolts to the transmission right in the factory location, allows you to shift um, through all the different four high, four low, neutral. Um, right. We have nice little trim rings and everything. It makes everything look nice and stock. And then we get the transfer case. Like here's, this isn't the exact transfer case you'll be getting, but that's an example of a brand new transfer case. Getting ready to go in another one. And then here's all of our cut jigs. This is what we use to bolt to the transmission. We shift through the gears, and this is how we figure out how, where to cut the hole up through the floor for your shifter. So these are all of our different cut jigs and everything that we use for um, modifying the frame on the vehicle to make clearance where we need it and uh, weld in our, our leaf spring shackle pivots as well. Okay, very nice. Yep. So we're in the middle of the vehicle now, uh, yep. working our way to the back. Uh, so what, rear drive shaft? Yep, so rear drive shaft, we're gonna take the one that's in there. We're gonna use the majority of your factory drive shaft. And um, you know, obviously that gets long, the whole powertrain gets longer by the length of the transfer case. So we need to slice off a little bit of the factory rear drive shaft, and then we're gonna weld the correct flange onto the front of it and then obviously drive shaft shop is doing all of this for us. It'll be completely rebalanced, recoded, and then it'll go back in. Okay, and then uh, that goes to the rear axle, which is a what in this particular vehicle? So this vehicle has a Dana 70 HD axle in it. So very serious axle. Um, it's 456. Um, more than likely, it's probably got a factory limited slip differential in it already. So generally on these things, we leave them alone unless somebody really, really, really wants a locker. Um, we'll generally just leave the rear axle alone. You know, this thing only has 4,500 miles on it. So there's nothing in there that needs rebuilding. Okay. Probably doesn't even need a fluid change yet. So <laughs> really, yet. really all we do in the back end of this vehicle is we're going to put our lift springs on the back of it, our heavy duty um, leaf springs. And then uh, we're going to put in the Fox shock absorbers. We're gonna extend some brake lines down, and that's about it for the rear end. Okay. It's pretty so simple. Let's talk about those springs, uh, yeah. the suspension system. You're also gonna put springs in the front, right? Correct. Or leaf springs. Yep, yep. And uh, do you have an example of what those look like and what are yeah, we looking definitely. at here? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we can, we can walk over and look at this guy here. This one's kind of like halfway, halfway through the conversion. So one of the first things that we're gonna do here on yours, um, we call it soft teardown. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take your front bumper off, take your front wheels off, take your front sway bar off. And then these come to us raw. We put them up in place and then we drill holes through the frame, both sides, and then that bolts through. And then there's an anti-crush sleeve in the front here that keeps the two halves of the frame from crushing in on each other when we bolt them together. Once we have this in place, we can put that jig I just showed you back there on the pegboard in right here and that'll cut in right back here, our rear position shackle pivot hole. So this has got nice aftermarket polyurethane bushings in it. We manufacture all these shackles and everything. And then from there, we can bolt in your front leaf springs. Okay. So these are made for us, especially by Alcan Spring, right over in Grand Junction. Um, each van gets its own springs. So we don't just buy like, you know, we don't have just an off-the-shelf spring. Every single set of springs is built specifically for that vehicle. So one of the first things, and you'll remember from when we first started off your build, one of the first things I have you do is go get it weighed, front rear axle weight. 
and we build the springs off of those weights. So okay. it's specific, it's highly specific per vehicle. You can't take your springs and go put them on something else because it's either going to be too heavy or too light. Too light, yeah. Yep. So custom springs all the way around. Yep. And uh, same spring front and back or slightly nope. heavier duty in the back? Yeah, so they're way heavier duty in the back. So like, say for example, um, your typical class C, they're somewhere around 4,500 to 5,000 pounds over the front axle. Sometimes as low as like, you know, 4,000 or so, kind of depends on the vehicle. Um, and then the rear on most class C's is somewhere between eight and 10,000 pounds on the rear axle. So that rear spring is insanely beefy. Okay. So like a tip, like your, one of your front springs probably weighs 95 pounds. One of your rear springs weighs 230 pounds. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, they're a very serious spring. And what we're doing too, that a lot of the other places do, or that is a big no-no, is to lift it up in the back, they're just putting a big old giant lift block underneath mm -hmm. that lift I've spring. I've seen that, yeah. We, that, and that makes that rear axle just walk around like this in the back. So our springs are arched for the lift and there's no lift block in the back. And that makes it ride way better and that makes them much more stable. Yeah. So that's one, another thing that sets us apart from everything else. Very cool. So Very while we're looking at this one, you can see another one of the things that we do too is we have to make a modification to this front engine cross member here. We have to make enough room for the differential to travel upwards in its suspension travel. So you can see this rear piece is not cut. This front piece is basically the mirror image of that. So we have to remove it. So that's one of those other jigs I just showed you over there on the pegboard. We have to make this cut right here. And you'll see a lot of the other conversions on the market. They just take a torch to this thing, cut it off real gross, and <laughs> leave it alone. We try and make everything look nice and factory and stock up underneath here when we're doing them. I love getting into the nitty gritty with you because yeah. you don't see this kind of stuff and nobody talks about it yeah. online. They're just like, I got a U-joint system and nobody really talks about this. So they don't know the devil in the details kind of like what you're explaining right now. So yep. this is super cool. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of details on them. Um, so you can see this is basically more or less how yours is gonna be. So this is how we have to change the rear adapter to the transfer case and everything here. Um, and then right here, this is where the, the transfer case shifter is going to bolt on right here. And then off of that, that gives us our cut. We generally cut a hole in the floor right here. That's where your shifter is gonna go up through. Very cool. Yep. Very nice. Okay, so while we're underneath this here, mm -hmm. any other changes in the particular van we're doing today in that uh, E350 that you have to do underneath here? Um, it really, the only other thing, like some of our stuff you can see, like these are all our pri proprietary brackets here. So this here, we manufacture this. This is your track bar bracket. It picks up um, two factory steering gearbox bolts, and then it picks up, this was like a rivet hole from the factory. Um, so we take that rivet out and then we bolt through here. A lot of guys, a lot of the other conversions you'll see on the market, just pick up these two holes and you'll wind up ripping this bracket off of the frame if you really take it on some aggressive off-roading. So all of our stuff is, and you can see it's gusseted and everything, our stuff is actually designed to be like wheeled, like really hard. It's not this fragile, delicate thing. It's designed <laughs> to go be beat on, you know? Okay. So that, and then we make these shock tabs up here also. So this is where the factory coil spring used to sit. So instead of slicing this big old nice strong bracket in here that Ford put on for us, we just designed this shock tab that fits right here. We weld it right into place and that's where your shock absorber bolts up. Very nice. Yep. And so when somebody's buying a kit to do in their driveway, whatever, it includes all these pieces you're yep, talking about. Yep, it comes with all the little parts, pieces and everything. Um, really like some of the guys that don't have any fabrication skills, they'll um, they'll just pay like a mobile welder or something to come out and do all the cutting and welding and everything for them. It usually winds up costing most guys, you know, two to 300 bucks or something. It's, it's not that much work. Okay, very yep. nice. Yep. All right. So your springs are kind of still tucked away on a pallet down here, but these are more or less uh, kind of the same springs um, that we're gonna be uh, that we're gonna be putting on yours. So this here, this is probably almost the identical pack. You can see how giant that leaf pack is. <laughs> That is a massive that is rear leaf pack. Compared to what you have underneath the vehicle. Yeah, so like uh, this right is now. this is just like a regular body 350 rear spring pack here. You know, this is probably maybe 105 pounds. Each one of these, like I said, yours, that 450 pack right there, 
It's a 230 pound leaf pack. That's okay. a very, very serious leaf spring pack. All right, and he was talking about some springs that we're putting on. These are my actual springs that are gonna go in there right now. And I wish I had a tape measure because I would show you guys exactly how much thicker these are, but you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten packs right here for the for the rear. And then you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, springs for what I'm assuming is gonna be the front. So um, this is good. And look at the size of these U-bolts uh, here. I mean, that's about a foot right there. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Four and a quarter on yours. Four and a quarter? Oh, oh, there we go. Somebody actually came to the rescue. So they're right about the same. They're right. just specced way, way different. The biggest difference is gonna be in your arch. Okay. So the springs, if you go look under yours right now, they're almost flat. Like yeah, so yeah, they're already sprung. <laughs> yeah, ours, the lift basically comes from the, the arch itself. Ah, so it's not just necessarily how many packs, how many springs there are in there. It's how far they are. Okay, yeah. very nice. And the front ones, how uh, uh, how big are those? Gonna be, they're going to be about the same as well. It's okay. all going to be built mainly into the arch. So the spring steel is a little bit different. They're going to be able to handle a little bit more weight. Okay. But the lift itself, instead of using like lift blocks or something like that, yeah. like other other brands do and other lift kits, we actually get all of our lift from the spring itself. See, and I was thinking the more uh, leafs you have on this, the more spring you get out of that, but it's actually the the curve Correct. of the spring. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Yep, the and little the actual, things that you learn. The actual makeup of the steel mm -hmm. and how they stack them in here is what gives you the weight capacity. Okay, so they may look the same as another set of springs out there, but mm -hmm. because of how they're actually made and the the the, the metal that's in there, that's that'll right. actually give you that spring rate, comfort, and uh, carrying capacity, etc., etc. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. No problem. Man. Yeah, appreciate it. Yep, so you guess getting the same thing. Okay, so this is gonna get a lift as well. Yeah, it's on the way. It's in the mail. Okay, and that's yep. gonna look that's gonna look like that one that's outside right now. Sure enough. Yeah, basically <laughs> the same tires and everything on the front is what we're gonna do on this one. So it'll essentially look like that. I'm keeping stock front bumper and everything to start out with. Okay. Just get the kit, get it up in the air and very nice. From there. Fun the times, man. I wish I did what you do. <laughs> I love it. All right. So you guys just heard about that. I was, you know, thinking the more leafs you've got on here, the better um, that spring is. But it actually has a lot to do as well with the the curve that he was talking about in these. And that's what kind of separates them as well. So uh, not just the amount of packs on there, but that curvature and the actual materials that it's made out of. So good information to learn right there. So what else do we have? So we've talked about the front, we've talked about the rear. You don't do anything with the rear axle. Mm -hmm. uh, on we, your particular vehicle. On my particular build. So like on this one, you know, it's getting a complete custom built rear axle. It's getting a locker back there. It's getting huge tall gears because this thing is getting giant 37 inch tires. Okay. You know, like on some of the older ones, we'll wind up doing brake upgrades and everything if it needs brakes at the same time. So we okay. have lots of options for other stuff. The 450s, like, or the four, 350 and 450 cutaway chassis, we kind of generally just leave them alone in the back because they're already about as good as they can get. Okay, and brakes wise on that uh, E350, we don't do anything with the rear brakes, just nope. front brakes. Yep, yep. So we're just beefing up the front brakes. The rear is more than the factory on those okay. 450s.